Hi, this is Ms. Linton, and this is seventh period support for chapter five. five. Let me go back there. Uh, membrane structure and function, say hi. Hi. And these are excellent AP biologists. We just reviewed a water potential problem. There's a separate video on that. You might want to watch it because if you're getting ready for your quiz tomorrow, a water potential problem will be on your quiz. So let's first start off start by membrane structure. If I ask you, let's say on an exam, preparing for your next exam, to diagram a membrane, could you do that for me? Yeah. What would be some key components of your membrane? What is the main component of it? Phospholipid bilayer. How would I draw my phospholipid? Show me with your hand. Like this. Okay. Guys, try not to talk when I'm talking because it's annoying. Okay? Now, um, next on here, what else would we need in our diagram? Proteins. Excellent, excellent idea. Okay, so I'm going to draw a protein right there. I'm going to draw a protein right here. That's a protein. And that is a phospholipid bilayer. Okay, sure. Ah, okay. Um, what could you tell me about this? No. What could you What could you tell me about this region right here? And this region right here? That's what I like to hear. Black. Okay, so this is hydrophilic. And this is hydrophobic. Why is that region right here hydrophobic? Long fatty acid chains. Right. That the, that the electrons are shared what? Equally, right? Non-polar covalent bonds? Okay. This region right here, the phosphate group, we have some phosphorus and we have some oxygen. We have some charges on there, so it's going to be hydro. What could you tell me about this region right here of this protein? Tell me. Okay, yeah, it is a channel. Good call. What could else could you tell me about it? <laughs> that region is hydrophobic. What makes up a protein? Amino acids. So those amino acids that build that protein of that region, right, are hydrophobic. And these regions right here must be hydrophilic. Okay. What do you call that protein that runs all the way through? No. Integral. What do you call this one right here? Peripheral. Good job. We're not done yet. Top is outside. Bottom is inside. What else do I need? Yes, ECM. Nice, nice. Okay, so I could have myself a little ECM right here. This technically, do you know what these are that I've drawn? Carbohydrate side chains. What's this one right here called? Glycolipid. And this one is a? Now, if I had other proteins and things out here, then that would be part of the ECM, extracellular matrix, right? That has to do with structure. Things out here, remember cells, we know about cells and we know about protein functions. Let's review the protein functions, ready? Here we go. Channels, carriers, cell recognition, receptors, enzymatic, and junctions. There were movements with that, you missed it. All right? <laughs> so, these carbohydrate side chains on the outside are hel helping cells recognize what? Each other, Each other, your own self, as well as stranger danger, right? Who do we need to kill? Who do we need to get rid of? Right? Okay, I saw hands. Yes. Um, the peripheral proteins, 
Yes. What, how does it, like, what, what's the difference between peripheral and Ah, peripheral is on either side. Integral goes from one side to the other. Yes. Um, Proteins, elastin, collagen. collagen. What? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, let's talk about, well you could if it was a particular junction. Okay. Yes. What else are we missing? We're missing two more things here. Cytoskeleton. There's some cytoskeleton. We're missing something else too. It's an animal cell. Cholesterol. I heard it. This drawing stuff. Okay, so that right there is cholesterol. And this is actin, part of our cytoskeleton. Okay, are we ready? Yes. Okay, so I just have another question. Don't know me wait, but go ahead. All the proteins everywhere make it different, right? Yeah, so the thing about the proteins is specifically are things like receptors. Those can be unique to each cell, right? And that's how we can send hormones surging through our body and they can pass every cell, but only those cells who have, boom, have a receptor for it are gonna influence the behavior of that cell. Signal transduction pathway. Yes? Uh, what's the function of cholesterol? Oh. Does anybody remember? Has to do with it. One word starts with an F. Fluidity. Good. So prevents from freezing or yeah, coming apart. And you see that in what kind of cells? Animal cells. You don't see it in plant cells. What do plant cells have to help them keep their membranes together? The wall. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just hypothesis. Why? Okay. Anything else on structure? Okay, so if we, we, not, we did structure, we did function. Remember this bilayer is creating a barrier, so what's going on inside the cell is different than what's going on outside of the cell. Let's talk about how to get across this barrier. We could go what? Through the phospholipid bilayer, but not if you are large or charged. You could use a channel or a carrier, or you could do Endocytosis. When we go through the phospholipid bilayer like that, what kind of transport could I call that all the time? Passive. Passive. And if I'm talking about water, it's called? Osmosis. Yes, osmosis. Because osmosis, back, osmosis is the diffusion of water from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. Water must flow from the hypo. How did a cucumber become a pickle? It was in a what kind of solution? Hypertonic. And the cucumber was hypotonic, so the water left the pickle. Oh, sorry, the cucumber, and it became a pickle. Yes. All right, now, through the phospholipid bilayer, another way to get across is using a channel or a carrier. If it's a channel, it's also going to be deemed what? Passive. But we're going to call it what kind of transport? Facilitated transport. Who's facilitating our... Okay. Who's facilitating his transport? The protein channel. Okay? It's getting facilitated because you're not going through the phospholipid bilayer. You're using that protein. Now, a carrier could be both passive and active. If you're going with the gradient from a higher concentration to a lower concentration and it's binding to it, high to low, then it's gonna be what? Passive. If you're going against the concentration gradient, if you're putting more and more and more to one side, that's gonna be active and that's gonna cause some ATP. What is the classic um, pump? Pump is the name they use for carriers that cost energy. Sodium potassium pump. Carriers that cause ATP are called pumps. And they're called pumps. 
All right, good. We did that. We did functions. We did that. We did that. We did that. We did that. Oh, aqua porins. Explain how water can move through a phospholipid bilayer faster than what we would predict. Why? Why would we think it would move slower? Because water is a mm, polar molecule. Remember, it has partial. Yeah. <laughs> a partial positive and a partial negative. So because of those polar bonds, that we would expect it to move a little bit slower, but it moves really fast through those aquaporins. We talked about signal transduction pathways, how you can have a receptor. Here the receptor is on the surface of the cell, but you could also have a receptor in the interior of the cell. Like if you are a steroid hormone, steroid dissolves lipid into lipid, so it could go through the phospholipid bilayer and bind to a receptor inside the cell. We will learn more about that later. Yes? Cardiomyopathy. Yeah. Well, it depends on the scenario, the temperature, the kinetic energy. Yeah. All right. What you would see though when you look at active, if it's getting actively transported, you're it's going at a rate you would not predict unless energy was involved. Yeah. But think about it. If something diffuses, it can go between all the different phospholipids. If it's active, it has to just use that one pump, right? Okay. All right, then we talked about diffusion. We talked about diffusion in lungs. We talked about some words, okay? What would we call this side over here? We would say it was hypertonic. Hi, sweetheart. And we would call this side what? Hypotonic. Sorry. Which one has more osmotic potential, side A or side B? Osmotic potential, A. Yeah, more osmotic potential. This side has more osmotic what? Pressure. Yes, pressure to come in. Okay. What would we call the sugar? OASs, osmotically active substances. We don't see the same effect if you have a membrane here and you have two sides and instead of sugar in here, I just dropped rocks or sand. It wouldn't have the same impact, right? That's not making water want to come in. There's no a thing that water is going to interact with. It's not an osmotically active substance. You're not going to see that change. It has to do with water interacting with it. Okay. All right, uh, we looked at that. We're okay, hyper, hypo. We looked at, here's red blood cell in an isotonic solution. Here it is in a hypotonic solution. What could happen to that red blood cell? It could what? It could burst. Okay? Lysis. It could burst. Um, and then we talked about when we put it in a hypertonic solution. Yep. So it could crenate, plasmolysis. All right, then we went on and we talked about water potential and you totally know about that. We already reviewed that. We talked about using a protein, easy peasy lemon squeezy, right, carrier. Now, in this situation, follow the arrows. Which way is the substance moving? Inside. So is it moving from higher to lower concentration, lower to higher concentration? So if it's moving from higher to lower, what would you think this particular example is? And what, what's another name for it? Facilitated transport or facilitated diffusion. Because it's diffusing from a higher to a lower. High to low. Still going high to low. Okay, we then, we looked at this example. Is this still, yes, I already labeled it. There's a pump, requires an ATP. Now, let's talk about, again, what are the three ways, so I can hit the third one, what are the three ways to cross? Through the phospholipid bilayer, but not if you're large or charged. Charged, good. And when water does this, we call it? And if I'm going this way, what must this side be? 
Hypertonic. If I'm going this way, and this must be hypotonic. What's another way to describe this over here? Higher osmotic pressure. This side would have a higher osmotic potential, potential to move, right? Okay. If it's same, same, what do you call it? Isotonic. Okay. Through the phospholipid bilayer, but not if it's large or charged. Second way? Channel or a carrier. When I talk about these channels, it could either be or it can only be passive, right? If it's a channel, if it's a carrier, it could be passive or active. Either way, this is going to be called what kind? Facilitated transport. Proteins have other functions too, besides channels or carrier. They're used for the proteins are used for receptors. Perfect. Okay. Then we said the third way for it to cross is whole membrane. And there's endocytosis and exocytosis. Endocytosis, there are three kinds. Think in your head, not out loud. Let your own brain come up with the answer. Not out loud. Do not take that learning opportunity from another. Okay, what would be the one if I'm engulfing fluid? Penocytosis. You can think about... <laughs> Penocy in cell eating is phagocytosis. What if a bunch of things bind onto some receptors and if I have enough of my receptors full, I do this. What's that? Receptor-mediated endocytosis. Penocytosis, cell drinking. Phagocytosis, cell eating. Receptor mediated. Ding, 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 ding. Exocytosis, one. Blah. Going out. All right. And then we talked about we talked about the different junctions. Remember the different junctions? Okay. So you have adhesion. I think I have adhesion here. Yes. Adhesion is when you join the cytoskeleton. Tight is protein to protein. Gap is channel to channel. Adhesion, adhesion, tight, protein to protein. Channel to channel is gap. There's a gap now. And the gap in plant cells is specifically called? Plasmo desmata. Boom. Plasmo desmata. Perfect. Here's a little plasmo desmata for you. Right here. Okay, that's the plasma desmata. Then the last thing, the last thing here is we're looking at that whole extracellular matrix. So we have not only the carbohydrate side chains, but we have proteins in there, elastins in there as well. Okay, got it? Yeah. Super smart. Love you very much. Study. Do the questions at the back. Have a piece of toast. Make good choices.